Hi guys, welcome to a new series called Champion Rundown, where I explain League of Legends champions in great detail. Today we start with Ash, the Frost Archer. Ash is a very good champion to learn how to play with, as she has a simple skill set and her damage comes from her auto attacks. She is a marksman, so she is very dependent on farm. Playing her is mostly about how well you can position in a team fight. Her low IP cost makes her very easy to pick up. Ash's passive, Focus, builds up a number every second until it reaches 100 stacks. Once it reaches 100, the next auto attack from Ash will be a critical hit. This can be very crucial to win trades in lane with the enemy marksman. Ash's Q ability, Frost Shot, is a toggle spell which will make every auto attack slow the enemy champion. This is great for controlling the enemy team and is your primary spell to keep you at a good distance from any threats. You should max this spell second as the extra slow will be very useful during mid to late game. Be careful not to use this more than necessary, as it will drain mana very quickly. Volley, the spell on W, fires out a cone of arrows which do damage and slow the enemy. This is very important to utilize during lane phase, as using it along with some auto attacks is the answer to winning any trades. You should max this first, as the extra damage will make it easier to compete in the early game. Hawkshot is Ash's third ability, which grants the team vision to a distant area. Ash also gets extra gold per minion kill once there are any points in the skill. You should max this skill last, as you won't need to use the skill too often. This is a great way to reduce face checking into a brush and can keep you safe on many occasions. Enchanted Crystal Arrow is your ultimate. It fires a huge arrow across the map and when it collides with a champion, it stuns them for up to 3.5 seconds and slows champions in a small radius around it. This should be leveled at level 6, 11 and 16 and you should use it sparingly as wasting this skill could give the opposite team a chance to initiate. A standard mastery page for Ash is 2109. This is a fairly generic marksman page which is used to get as much physical damage out of what is available. 9 points are put into utility to pick up the extra mana and regeneration, and the increased buff times for a longer use of red buff. If you're struggling to CS properly, you can take 2 points out of Fury and put them into Butcher instead for an extra 4 damage to minions. It could also be an idea to put your point into Summoner's Insight in the utility tree if you feel that 15 seconds off of the flash cooldown is more useful than improved recall. If you feel like you need additional defense in your lane as the opponent has a very strong comp, try 2190. This gives additional health and armor for additional protection. Summoner's Resolve also increases your barrier by another 20 health which could make a lot of difference in a teamfight. A standard marksman rune page should also be used. Physical damage marks, flat armor seals, flat magic resist glyphs, two life sub quints and one physical damage quint is what I use across all of my marksman characters. Some people prefer to use scaling magic resist glyphs but I'm personally not a fan of scaling runes. One damage quint is used to improve CSing underneath the turret. Flash is always recommended on Ash as it makes up a little bit for her lack of mobility. She is generally a very passive laner, so your second choice of summoner should reflect that. Barry or Heal are very good picks. If you feel that you can be more aggressive, either Ignite or even Ghost could work in some situations, but I wouldn't recommend you use these until you're very confident in playing her. So on to the item build. For any marksman, the main priority is to get as much damage as you can get out. Obviously you're not going to be doing damage if you're dead, so you need to make sure you stay alive at the same time. So Infinity Edge is a big deal for Ash. She wants uh, Infinity Edge, she wants Berserker Greaves and either Static Shiv or Phantom Dancer. If you feel like you're destroying bottom lane, Phantom Dancer scales much better into late game. But if uh, you want the extra early game boost, Static Shiv is a lot better for that. Um, once you've got the core build sorted, if you start looking at what the enemy is building, uh, you can go on to Last Whisper if they've got lots of armor. Uh, that's a pretty standard item for a marksman build. So if you do find, well, you probably will find that that will be one of your items. If the enemy's got an assassin or you find that you're dying, Guardian Angel is good for any case. It's got both armor and it's got magic resist. 
You've got Banshee's Veil, which is specifically for mages if they kill you fast. Um, that will block one spell, so against certain people like maybe Zerath or someone like that, then that could save a lot of damage. Or if the enemy has got some sort of um, AD damage, someone that auto attacks you, and they're running after you and you can't get away, Randu and Zoman can really help with kiting as well. Um, if you do die quickly, then a Warmog is obviously going to be a lot of health bonus, but obviously it's not got too much else other than health, so the uh, you won't have any extra magic resist or any um, armor from that. If the enemy has suppression, this is mainly focusing on Warwick ult or Mazaha ult, and you've, uh, there's no other, well they're aiming for you, there's no other way to get out, you're going to need to buy a Mercurial Skimitar. This is pretty much the only option because obviously you need to stay alive and if everyone's just blowing you up before you get to do any damage then you're going to be worthless. So that can save you, save yourself in a lot of situations. And then obviously you've got the Bloodthirster. This, you're going to build that if you feel like you need more damage. It comes with a lot of damage. If you need more lifesteal. And that's also a very common pick for a marksman. So you've got to make the best decision that you can. During lane phase, you want to make sure you can farm as well as you can while still putting pressure on the enemy laners. You should start by buying Doran's Blade as the passive lifesteal from it and your 4% lifesteal on your runes will be enough to sustain in lane and give you a boost in damage and health too. Well, I think not. When I get to lane, I sit in the brush to protect the red from the enemy jungler. Be careful if the enemy has a blitzcrank as sometimes they'll try and hook into the bush to get a lucky kill. Once the minions are in lane, I start CSing as usual. A tip for any laner is to try and get level 2 as fast as you can. If you can get there before the enemy can, you have a spell advantage and can do considerable damage, even managing a kill sometimes. This will create a lot of pressure and allow you to easier win your lane. Another more advanced tip you can do to create pressure is that if you don't have a minion coming in to last hit, you can hit the enemy with an auto attack while they're trying to last hit your minions. They won't be able to react as they want the gold so it's free damage for you. You should always be ready to support your support if they're being aggressive. Try not to overly focus on your minions because if the other team gets a kill, they have a gold and a morale advantage. My Zara landed a very good route and I tried to turn aggressive to get the kill on the Draven. We didn't get the kill in the end and I misplayed a little but we managed to push the Draven out of the lane so we'll lose experience and farm. This creates a lead for us to make the lane in our favour. If you find yourself in a situation where the enemy marksman has had to go back, push the lane as much as possible to the tower so they'll lose more resources before they can return. United, we are stronger. When I get back to lane, the enemy is pushing the wave towards my tower. I feel confident enough that I can last hit under tower, so I can keep the minions on my side for as long as possible. This makes it harder for the enemy to last hit, as they have to be far forward and are in a position where a gank could be brutally effective. Requires a steady hand. Stand together. Zara manages to get a very good route, and I hadn't wasted my ult yet, so I had a good opportunity for a kill. It would have been much easier with a little bit of extra mana, but I managed to pick it up with an auto attack. This gives me enough gold to buy my BF sword, which will build into an infinity edge, and it gives me a huge power spike. I see that Malphite wants to come and gank our lane, so I start to slow the enemy, giving him a chance to get here. The Leona jumps in to protect our marksman, and we manage to get the killing blow onto her. We manage to kill the Tyra in our lane, and we get a bit greedy. We get surrounded by the enemy team, and there's no way of escaping the situation. I turn from the fiddle up, which also gives the time for the Zyra to escape, making the loss much less hurtful. Once the tower is down, it usually marks the end of lane phase. You need to try and push other objectives to try and help your team. 
In this case, I almost have my infinity edge and I picked up a vampiric scepter for a bit of lifesteal too. Sometimes it's a good idea to help push mid tower, but in this case, it was quite obvious that a team fight was about to erupt. Our Malpha and Kennen went around the back and got a nice ult combo off with Zyra, keeping them all CC'd for a nice amount of time. I focused the targets I feel are a bigger threat within the fight or who are close to dying. In this case, my main two priorities are Draven and Karthus. After the fight ends, I realized that Lee is top and we have a big minion wave at that bot tower. Me and Zyra tried to do as much damage as possible and managed to take it out just in time. I noticed that the enemy team are starting dragon, so I make my way to it as soon as possible. I ping to my team to make sure that they know I'm coming. I use my ult for a very small chance of stealing the dragon, but even better to lock up the Leona who is very low health. She manages to escape with a small amount of health, but me and Kennen manage to chase down the fiddle with the constant slow of my W and my Q. In this scenario, the lead comes from top and I find myself in a tough position to escape. I use my W to keep as much distance from the enemy as I can. I notice my team goes in as they see a good chance of initiation, so I make my way back to the fight as quick as possible. I once again focus the high priority targets. I negate as much damage from the Carthasol as possible with my barrier so I can continue in chasing the enemy team. Notice how I've waited to use my ult as I didn't feel it would have enough impact in any of the situations I was in before. I managed to clean up the fight and take mid tower, pushing our team further into the lead. You have to make sure that even with all the action going on, you continue farming as well as possible. After I clear the wave bot, I TP back so I can buy Berserker Greaves and buy a Zeal. The Zeal has the option of building into both a PD or a Static Shiv. We must press on. My team find a pick on the Lee. I ping to say that I'm coming, but by the time I'm there, I wouldn't make much difference to the outcome. I don't use my ult, and instead, I push the wave to the tower so we can take another objective. United, we are strong. An enemy has been slain. We rotate mid and find ourselves in another team fight. Being Ash, it's tough to get away from a team with people who can stick onto you. In this case, it's Leona and Lee Sin, and they make it so I have no chance to get away. I have enough money to finish my core build and to buy some more items. I look at how much armor the other team has, which they only had one item. I felt it would be better if I started working towards a bloodthirster for some more damage and lifesteal. Another chance for a fight comes up. This time, it's up to me to engage. I wait until the enemy is in a choke so it's easier to hit my arrow, then I fire it. It hits Fiddle, causing him to not be able to use his ult and slow the other two. Once again, Leona sticks on me, but I've managed to do the damage I needed to do, and we come out on the upper hand. Our team has a chance to do Baron, as the enemy Draven is far away. We start it and do as much damage to it as possible. 
I use my E to give my team vision of the enemy fill in case he decides to try and ult into the pit. Once we take Baron, I attack only the targets I feel are a threat to me, so I switch between both Lee and Draven accordingly. Finally, I use my ult to stop the Leona from retreating and we get the ace. The enemy team feel like we have too big of a lead, so they end up surrendering. Okay, so that's the start of my series. Um, hopefully you've learned enough about Ash to be able to go into a decent game and uh, hopefully you've learned something from it. It took me, I think, seven or eight hours today. So I think I'm gonna try and get into the rhythm of things and then get uh, releasing some videos more often. Cause it wasn't that bad to be honest. Like before I always had uh, motivation problems about editing, but I've sat down and I've been going at it. And like once, once you picked it up, you can't really stop until you've finished, so. I've been going for it pretty well today. Um, I'll try and get a new champion out weekly, if I can. Um, I'll start out my time zone. I'll also be still doing the general um, general tips type of videos as well. So I'll be getting them done pretty soon. If you do like it, please say so. Um, I've been still looking at my other beginners tutorial and the amount of views on there and the amount of people saying they like that, it's amazing. So that's a lot of the motivation that makes me want to make some more videos and I want to make uh, things more active if pof uh, possible. Um, I think that's about it. I will probably make another video in a few days. I've got a lot of time off at the moment, so I've got time to do it. And uh, yeah, I hope you did learn something and thanks for watching. Oh, one thing actually. Um, if you can, I, I should probably plug myself because it took long enough. Uh, please do go to my Facebook and like my Facebook page because obviously that's one of the most important things. And if you enjoy this channel and you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, there'll be more. There'll be a lot more content soon, hopefully. Uh, that's everything. See you.